I am not my name. Funnily enough, I'm certainly not my name. Everything that's written to you is written to your name. It's not to your flesh and blood. It can, actually can't be to your flesh and blood. It's to your name. And all actually you have to do is to say, I'm not that name, fundamentally. None of them believe you. I mean, the, the police don't believe you, the courts don't believe you, and so on, of course. Actually, there are some police, funnily enough, in recent weeks, who started to realise that maybe that's the truth. That people are not their names. I'll hopefully come on to a lot of that. That's the, like the latest stuff, uh, which I hope to talk about. Um, but uh, that's if there's time. OK. Um, think about an identity parade. Think about an identity parade. Do they stand there with their name, holding up the name? Or do they just stand there as the, the witness walks by, looking at each individual in the lineup? That's the one they might go. Not by the name, because they're not holding a name. They do it by observation of the flesh and blood, because that's a common law situation. Common law is all about human beings. It's not about names and paperwork. Fundamentally, what happens in the common law, we look at a situation, we use our common sense, and we go, oh, it makes sense to uh, make sure that Justice is never delayed, all right? Oh, so that was written down in the Magna Carta. Uh, it makes sense that people who administer the law should know the law and abide by it and mind, be minded to observe it well. So that's written down as Article 45. Common sense stuff. Legal, which comes out of Parliament, so in other words, sorry, so, so with common law, what we do is we see, what, see reality, the reality of a situation, and we write down a common sense situation that fits the reality. Parliament, they write the, the statute, right? And then they say, ah, that creates reality. Whatever the statute says is now reality. No. Reality doesn't work that way. Reality is reality. You can observe it and write it down. You can't just write a statute and that makes it real. It's the opposite way around. The deception is to make you believe that you are your name when you're not. Your name is nothing more than a fiction <coughs> for the convenience of legal to operate on you without your consent. Also, sorry, for the convenience of your parents and your friends to call you. Which is why I am Veronica of the Chapman family, if you go back to uh, my first screen or if you look at the cover of my book. I'm Veronica of the Chapman family as commonly called. So when people go, Veronica, I go, oh, that's me. But that's all it is to get my attention to get your name, the convenience of your parents and friends to get your attention, but it's no more than that. No more than that. And they certainly don't have the right to use that to do you for council tax, income tax, road tax, insurance, TV licence, you name it. Parking fees, parking fines, you name it. Don't have the right. Rough justice. I've already sort of alluded to this. Can you be jailed? Yes. Can your DNA be taken? Yes. Can your local council or the Crown Prosecution Service or a utility company be jailed? No. Not the company. And that's basically what would be, uh, would be the court case would be against you. You know. Herefordshire Council versus whatever. Uh, can, it, can, can the local council, Crown, Crown Prosecution Service or utility company have its DNA taken? No. How can any honourable adjudication take place between these two parties? You, the human being, have just about everything to lose and they've got virtually nothing to lose. 
The playing field is stacked vertically against you. They are there, you are there. There is no point in even trying to discuss it with them or argue with them, but I'll come on to what you can do. Interesting, the last one. One of the things that the police love to do, or do these days, is to take your DNA. How dare they? Ah, but the very fact that you've got DNA and they can take it proves you are not a legal fiction. It proves you're not your name. It proves you're a, a flesh and blood. So when you get the summons to your name, Mr or Miss or Mrs da -de da you can write back and say, but I'm not that name and the fact that my DNA was taken is forensic evidence that I'm flesh and blood and not that name. That name is just marked on a piece of paper, a sound in the air when it's spoken or pixels on a computer screen. It's not me, I'm flesh and blood. I have a soul, I have limbs, I have a brain, I have spirit. I can kick a football. OK, what is the common law then? <laughs> it fundamentally breaks down into four aspects. I've said it's the way to live in peace and it's the common sense way to live in peace. But analysing it a little bit further than that, each of these is no deliberate and to prevent accidental as far as you can. I'll take the first one, no deliberate harm to anyone else and as much precaution as is reasonable to prevent accidental harm from your actions. Don't leave things where people can fall over them, okay? You could harm them. Be aware where you leave something. But in all of these cases, there is a point where it becomes unreasonable. <laughs> 